G'day and welcome back to the channel. I've got a treat for you today. If you're into electronics, if you like to see really bad stuff, then I've got a special super treat for you because this is the speed controller, the motor controller from my 7 inch by 10 inch mini lathe. It's a machine I bought over, well, nearly 20 years ago and it was one of the first of the cheap Chinese lathes, at the, the shop tools that they started bringing out and they were available all over the world. I, was got, I got in really early, which got a bit of a mistake because it, piece of crap as far as the electronics go and this is the speed controller you can see on here this is designed it has a little knob for varying the speed it has a button for starting the, the and stopping the lathe it has a switch for going forwards and backwards and it has a main power switch here which turns it on a fuse which you notice is missing I'll tell you about that in a moment um so you know powerful little thing you can a variable speed is fantastic when you're using a lathe because it enables you to optimize the spindle speed to get the best cutting the smoothest cutting and so forth without having to fart around with gears and belts so it's really really handy so this was a really nice little it is a really nice little lathe until you turn this box over and then you will have a heart attack and this is what i'm talking about this is the other side this is the electronics inside this speed controller i don't know what they were sipping on the rice patties when they came up with this but honestly she's pretty bad it's very very bad in fact it's the worst piece of electronics i've seen out of china in 20 years let's walk through it a little show you i'll show you the bits i like and the bits i don't like right first of all um, here is the main fit this is the thing that switches the power to the motor off and on it's a pulse width modulation speed controller which means it gives little bursts of speed a little bursts of power and it creates a little pulse and to go more power you have a wider pulse and with less power a narrow pulse it's a pretty simple it's a worldwide you know common way to control DC motors because this has a DC motor in it it isn't a uh, brushless AC motor it's a DC motor so this is a FET can handle lots of amps and lots of volts no problem so this is in series with the motor just walk you through it the mains power comes in over here so the mains power comes in goes through these pointless little coils because they won't stop any electromagnetic radiation I think they're just there for looks capacitor to try and do the same goes into a bridge rectifier here which turns the AC into DC but it's not DC as we know it. When I did a video on my RC model reviews channel about diodes, I showed what happens when you rectify AC without smoothing, without a capacitor to fill in the gaps. It becomes very, it becomes a pulsed DC. And in the case of New Zealand, where we have 50 hertz mains, 100 hertz of DC pulses come out of this bridge rectifier. And there's no big capacitor in here to turn it into smooth DC. It runs on raw pulsed DC. It's really rough as guts. So we're out of here. We have a which would be probably half. It'll be half yeah it'll be half of the 250 so I've got about 125 volts RMS coming out of here which is I don't know times uh, 1.4 is oh, I forget my brain doesn't work anyway so you get under 200 volts probably about 150 volts of of DC coming out of here and that DC then goes off to the motor through this control fit here so the idea is that we have short pulses for slow rotation wide pulses for uh, fast rotation but we need to create pulses so what happens is all this other circuitry you see in here is designed so that when you turn this knob the width of the pulse going to the motor changes and that's basically it although there are there are some extra bits as well which I'll explain momentarily so there's it's a fairly simple task to do this these days we get one chip solutions to this um, and I do have some of the one chip solutions I may look at that but I want to make it a bit more fancy when I rebuild this because I am going to rebuild it I'm going to re throw this out and start from scratch because what happened the other day was I went to use this lathe after probably three years of in use turned it on the fuse blew and the magic smoke came out so hmm, something happened while it was just sitting there doing nothing and what seems to have happened is this fit here there's a burn mark around here so it looks as if the insulation between this and the headstock of the lathe which it uses as a heat sink that insulation broke down there was an arc between there and the the headstock of the lathe which took out the fuse now it may be that nothing else on this board is damaged it's just taken the fuse out or it could be it's taken out the MOSFET because I have replaced this before but ultimately this is I had to repair this board several times and it's just unreliable and it doesn't work that well and I don't know that it's even that safe because we've got mains voltage floating around in here and if one of the insulation one of these switches broke down or the pot broke down or the button you could electrocute yourself so I'm not really keen on that I've got a few more years left in me I don't really want to disappear in a puff of magic smoke so what I'm going to do is rebuild it but let's take another look at, let's take a look at what's going on on this board and oh it's horrific let's let's zoom in on some of the worst parts right what you can see here is some heat damage now this is a standard fiberglass printer circuit board double-sided through hole construction and I've used these power resistors here because one of the problems is most of these chips here that we see these run on relatively low voltages we're talking 10 5 to 10 volts these chips run on but we've got 
150 volts coming out of our rectifier. So they've used resistors like this just to drop the power, drop the voltage down to a much lower level. So most of the energy gets used up, appears as heat. So these things get stinking hot. They have conductive copper wire. So it conducts down to the board and the board gets hot and it goes brown. And sometimes it can even carbonize and you get short circuits on the board. Bad, bad, bad design, really bad design. And there's another big powerful resistor here, which is another, there's too many big resistors that are getting too hot on this board. The rest of it, it's not too bad. I mean, that's fairly standard through whole layout. I can't complain, but you'll notice if I turn this around, there's no writing on the chips. See, they've, they've, all oh, those Chinese, they're so worried about industrial espionage that they've sanded it off the markings on the chips. I mean, they, they still do that to this day in some components. So nothing, why? I'm pretty sure these are just some LM324 quad op amp, quad comparators. I, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. I could just reverse engineer the circuit, but I can't be bothered because it's such a crap circuit in the first place. Um, so yeah, there's bits where it gets too hot. Um, and on the bottom, it's you can see the heat damage on the bottom through there. Look at that. That's awful. That's terrible. And then there's bodge wires running from up here way down to there. And it's just, it's just not very good at all. I am, the sooner I get rid of this, the better. And it's got little trim pots down here. And of course, no schematic, no manual, no instructions, no way to circuit fault find this. When I've repaired it in the past, I've had to reverse engineer pieces and come up with solutions. Um, but I'm just getting tired of fixing it. And um, I just want something that's safer and better. So I am going to design a new board. I'm going to design one using a microcontroller, which means it'll be computer controlled, which means that, let me pull out a bit here so we can get a better look at what we're talking about, which means that instead of all this grottiness here, this, this switches and buttons and knobs, I'm going to have an LCD here and I'm going to have a built-in tachometer feedback. Now at the moment, this board has this big fat resistor here. And the way it works is you turn the knob until you get a certain speed. And then if, as you apply load to the lathe, so you start cutting metal, the motor will naturally tend to try and slow down. That means that it will draw more current and more voltage will appear across this resistor. That is then fed back into the circuit to increase the power to the motor. So it kind of has a feedback loop that tries to keep the motor at stable RPMs regardless of the load. And it works reasonably well. Um, it still slows down a bit, but I'm thinking, well, we've got computers, we've got chips, you know, half that size that do as much as you want. So I'm thinking I might put an optical feedback tachometer on the motor shaft. So I will actually be measuring directly the RPMs, not just relying on the fact it's going to draw more current, but measuring the RPMs, which means up this end here, I'll have an LCD display. And on that LCD display, you'll be able to dial up the RPMs you want using the knob. And then above that will be the actual RPM. So you can see that the motor or the lathe is spinning at the speed you want rather than the speed you think you've got. So that's going to be quite a good bonus feature, I think. I'm not sure if I go to touch screen because that'll just get oily and I'll get messy and it stop working. So I'll probably keep um, a rotary knob for setting the speed and just an LCD. Now, don't run the lathe backwards because I don't do much in the way. And it's also, when you run it backwards, belts tend to come off, so <laughs> I'm not going to bother. So all it needs is on and start and speed. So that's all I'll have on there. So there'll be room for an LCD. That'll be great. Now, I'm going to use one of the popular microcontrollers. I am, I'm quite fond of PIC controllers because they do have a lot of the necessary components. They have pulse width modulation designed specifically for motor controllers and things. They have analog to digital converters for measuring where pots are turned to. And they have um, general I.O. lines you can use to drive LCDs. So it, yeah, the PIC series are really nice and they're super duper cheap. So I may look at that, see what I do. As I say, I do have a one chip solution, but it's designed for 12 volts. And of course we're dealing with 150 volts here. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky. One thing I will do, which I will do, is I'm going to, this is already isolated, I should say. See these little white things, they are opto isolators, which means that this very low voltage circuitry is effectively isolated from this high voltage over here by these opto isolators. But it's still, the voltage to drive these still comes through these very, very hot resistors. So I'm going to put a little transformer in here to drop the voltage down to drive the low voltage side of things. And I'm still gonna use opto isolators. So this will be the only part of the circuitry that has any connection to high voltage because um, even though these resistors will drop the voltage down, they're still connected to the mains on this machine. I want a transformer isolation so that all my switches and that, even if something broke down in there, I'm not gonna have high voltage appearing on my switches or my knobs, so it's gonna be super duper safe. That's what I plan to do. So there you go, that's a sort of a, a look at it. But as I say, I don't know what kind of opium filled party they were on when they designed this board and, and or even worse when they built it, but it's really not very good. Let's see if we can do better in the 
or second decade of the 21st century. I'm sure we can, and hopefully it'll be an interesting project that you want to follow along with. You'll probably learn a bit because we'll look at uh, various aspects of electronics, FETs, how they work, uh, microcontrollers, how they work, a little bit of programming. It'll be a side project. I hope to get it done before the new year because I've got some time over Christmas. And if that's the case, well, there'll be a few videos out on this. And um, if it's the sort of thing that interests you, then let me know in the comments down there. And if you've got one of these 7x10, now they're 7x12 mini lathes, um, it's probably a damn sight more modern than mine. It has a much better speed controller, and I could have gone out and bought a replacement speed controller, but where's the fun in that? This should be a relatively simple project. I'm expecting my board will have far fewer components than that. It'll be a lot smaller than that, and it'll work a hell of a lot better than that. So let's see if I can do it. Let's see if it works. There you go. So suggestions? Got any suggestions on this project? Let me know down there. And... Um, yeah, just if you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. And we'll see where we go, because once the lathe's finished, I've got a whole lot of projects that I think you'll be even more interested in, which I'll be making up early in the new year. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I appreciate it, and we, I wish you a Merry Christmas, but I'm sure there'll be videos before then. Bye for now.